My guest today is way more than a triple threat. He's an actor, a producer, a director, acting coach, vocalist. In fact, he's even a dancer. You really need to stick around for this show because we're going to find out perhaps what he is not, if there's anything. And it's all here on Faith on Film. Welcome to Faith on Film. I'm very excited about today's show because my guest not only is, like I mentioned in the teaser, an actor and an acting coach and a producer and a director, but he's a dancer. And so you got to understand, I love dancing. So I can't wait to hear all about what this is all about with him being a dancer. So listen, let me give him a proper introduction, though. Uh, Michael made a living on stage for most of his life, starring on Broadway shows all over the country. The last 15 years, he's worked as an actor on television and film projects and currently owns a production company producing TV commercials, internet videos, feature films, and documentaries. Michael Geyer, welcome to Faith on Film, man. How you doing? I am great. Thank you for having me. Oh, I tell you, I uh, you know, and, and I know that you you kind of did this on a, a rather short notice. I had somebody that canceled out, and I said, "I well, I got to call Michael." And I really didn't know all this about you, but as I started reading your bio and stuff, I became very very excited. I should have had you on like my third or fourth or fifth show. I don't know. I should have had you on sooner. But nonetheless, <laughs> you're here now. So one of the things that I really like to do is to get people to connect, get our viewers to connect with you. Um, and not just you, the actor, but you, the person. So let's start off by finding out who you are and, and uh, how you started in this business. Well, I started in junior high school. I was going to take a Spanish class, and all of my friends were taking drama, and they said, forget the Spanish class, come join us. So I was, all right, I'll give it a shot. Never done anything before on stage or acting. That's where it all started. And then in San Diego, they have something called San Diego Junior Theater, and it's a professional theater. It's run, it's run by adults, but all the kids do the shows. They do backstage. They do the costumes. But it's full-on amazing musical productions. They have acting lessons, dance lessons, singing lessons. That's where I got started. I got trained. And at the age of 17, I became a Christian. I also got my first professional job performing. And it was in a group called The Bright Side. We were singers, dancers on Vegas. We opened for Wayne Newton. Um, all over the country we performed. And that was my first big start. And then I worked for a theater in San Diego called Lamb's Players Theater, Christian organization, but one of the top theaters in San Diego because of the quality. And from there, I went to Los Angeles and started getting hired uh, for jobs all over the country, starring in Broadway shows and had a blast. I love it. Singer, dancer, actor, it's my favorite thing to do. Wow. Pero no aprendiste español. No, poquito español. <laughs> Yo sé que puede resolver todos tus problemas. What I've done is I've done street theater, street theater in Mexico. Uh -huh. And so I learned Spanish for my lines doing the street theater, evangelical street theater. So I know my lines still, but I don't know I don't know the Spanish like I should because I went into drama. <laughs> so you kind of though moved right into uh, faith based uh, faith based entertainment, let's call it faith based dramas from early on then. Well, you know, it, I, uh, I guess so, because Lamb's Players was probably the first faith-based thing I had done. Although they don't do faith-based productions, they happen to be run by Christians, and they put out positive uh, messages with the touring company. But on their main stage, they do full-on Broadway musical-type shows. Like I, I did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat there with them, and I played I Joseph. That one. Wonderful show. So they do yeah. major shows that everybody knows secularly, and they have a lot of their audience are secular you know, mm -hmm. people just looking for a good show, but they have such high respect in San Diego for putting out quality. They do really well. And they still do. I mean, I was with them 35, 36 years ago. They're still strong today. One of the best theaters in San Diego. Wow. Now, I was reading that uh, some of your film credits and work uh, include working with Ben Kingsley in the HBO feature film Miss Harris, Mrs. Harris, Geronimo with Gene Hackman and Matt Damon. And, yeah. of course, tap dancing with the greatest uh, tap dancer of all, Gregory Hines, in the film Tap. You know, now I'm going to have to go back and watch that film. I have watched it before, <laughs> but I'm going to have to go back there and find you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it seems like you've actually done a lot of major stuff. Yeah, I have. And, and both of those, the Geronimo, I was actually a principal dancer as well, believe it or not. It was a union job, and we got some still getting residuals from that all these years later. But I got to meet and work with Gene Hackman. He was in the scene with us. Uh, was great. Gregory Hines, though, I got to work with him for a week. 
and the man was amazing, an amazing tap dancer, but an amazing human being. And to get to be in a film with him and to get to tap dance next to the man was unbelievable. I was 21 years old. I got cast. I was living in San Diego. They brought me up to L.A. And, and uh, there's a group of us. But, you know, the fact that I got to be there next to him and get to know him was amazing and a real joy. I can imagine. My goodness. Um, now, you were already a Christian when you were uh, doing those those uh, films? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is this might be get a little personal here, but did you kind of keep that hidden into yourself? Because I know some people are kind of afraid to let it know that they're Christians uh, because you can't get ostracized. So how did it work with you? Did, did you keep it to yourself or were you outspoken? And I don't mean when I say outspoken, I don't mean that you try to get everybody there saved. But was it obvious to them that you were a Christian? Well, I would, I, I've got a couple of things I'll tell you from different shows I've, I've done. But um, when I first got became a Christian and was saved at 17, I, w okay. I went to a school called the School of Evangelism and just really got a strong foundation for my faith biblically. And, uh, and I even taught evangelism. I became a teacher and, and was teaching the things at my school uh, church. They had the school called School of Evangelism at night. I eventually was teaching there. Um, but I became a very strong Christian. So when I went into the entertainment business, that didn't go away. I was still a strong Christian. Mm -hmm. And I kept uh, my faith close to me. I didn't go out there and broadcast it. I didn't want to turn people off, but I wanted to be an example. I wanted to yes. be a friend. I wanted to be there for them if they needed me. And I think that's where I sh it showed up as being a Christian. And there were opportunities where I was able to share with people at times, but I was never right. there forcing it. I was there as an example. That's fantastic. And well, I'll give know, you something else when we come back from the break. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hey, you must have been doing TV quite a long time already because you know there's breaks that are coming up, aren't there? Uh, well, I tell you what, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and uh, take a break now and then we'll come back because I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, being a Christian in a secular world because it seems like you did a lot of secular work. Uh, and there are people out there that feel like, oh, if you're a Christian, you should only do Christian work, which makes no sense to me, because I feel like that would mean that if I'm a baker, I can only make, uh, you know, communion <laughs> bread or something. So uh, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for that one. But listen, we're going to talk about that a little bit when we come back. So folks, don't go away. We got so much more. We'll be right back. Cell reproduction, more than duplication. It's careful selection and organization, ensuring the perfect balance for development and growth. Powerful, so is our programming. Parables, the leader in empowering entertainment. Parables, be empowered. Start your free trial today. Sight and Sound Theaters invites you to experience one of the most powerful Bible stories ever told. Samson, you're going to deliver our people from the Philistines. God gave him the strength to fight thousands. Where does he get his strength from? Nobody's that strong. But his greatest challenge will be living with his own choices. Who are you? Delilah. We want you to find out the secret of his strength. We will destroy Samson. I don't know! Playing in Branson for one last encore season. Get ready for a mighty adventure for the whole family. You are my rock and my strength. Be with me today. Samson, live on stage at Sight and Sound Theaters in Branson, Missouri. I wonder how long a dolphin lives. I wonder if they can make cookies in space. I wonder when people started brushing our teeth. I wonder if people and dinosaurs ever lived together. Want to find out? I wonder how much a cloud weighs. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're talking today with my friend uh, Michael Geyer. I hope I said that right, by the way, because uh, I, I I have a tendency sometimes of screwing up names. It's Geyer, right? 
It is Geyer, yes. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, you job. know, we, we started to touch a little bit on the previous segment about us as Christians working in a secular world. Now, I got to tell you, I, I have worked in Christian media pretty much all my life. In fact, uh, I started volunteering for Trinity Broadcasting Network when I was like, uh, I think it was... 18 years old or so but there was one year that i worked uh in secular tv um and i gotta tell you one of the things that i started doing i, I didn't want to get in there and try to get people saved that, that, that it's not really who i am but i wanted to at least let them know who i was so as we started the show it was a daily live show and i just said you know what folks i don't want to make everyone uncomfortable i just need to pray before i do a live show i've done that for years and it calms me down and so I did that, and at first, everybody out there I heard was looking at each other like, who's this weirdo? But by the time the week was over, they actually were reminding me to pray. They would you know, they'd get on the headset, hey, Isaac, don't forget to pray. Uh, how do you feel when you work on these secular sets? Well, of course, I don't go in and you know, ask them to pray. I, I, I am on the secular set, but... Um, you know, I, I do think it's important just to be who I am, and I have had many opportunities where I've been able to share my faith. Mm -hmm. And um, there was one time I was working on a TV show called The Middleman, and we were off. We weren't filming at the time; they were setting up for the next shot. We were off to the side, and, and my my scene was with the two stars of the of the series, and they all got into a whole little conversation about Christians and Republicans, and every single person on set was just jumping on the bandwagon oh, against Christians wow. and Republicans. So needless to say, I kept my mouth shut in, in that situation. I was still a good guy. I still hung out with him, talked to him, had right. fun. You know, but I didn't want to get into an argument because, in my opinion, what is the point? It's I'm not right. going to change their right. mind. They're not going to change my mind. I'd rather just be an example and not let their conversation lead us all into an argument. So I let it go. Yeah. And sometimes I think you have to do that. Yep. But when I produce in direct projects, I hire and bring on a lot of non-Christians. And the one thing I hear all the time is that, your set is so amazing because it's relaxed, it's fun, mm -hmm. we get a lot accomplished, it's quality. Um, but in Hollywood, it can be very tough, and people aren't the nicest, right. and people get mad, they yell, they scream. That's just Hollywood. But not on my sets as a Christian set, and I think that speaks volumes to the non-Christians around me as well, which is important. Sure. And you know what? This is why I really have started now on the show to ask people to pray for those that are involved in, in the uh, film industry. Uh, pray for those that are involved in the Christian film industry because there's a lot of sacrificing that, that goes on when you choose to uh, uh, to be in the faith film industry. Because I'm going to tell you, there's no money. I mean, it's yeah. really tough. Some of these filmmakers literally hawk their house to get the film made that you know they feel God told them to make. But I think we also need to pray for those that are Christians that are in the literally in the front line of the battle if you will uh, you know being out there in that secular side because it is it is tough it's it's a, it's, it's got to be you know it's got to be hard when you know everybody can potentially come a, come against you i mean did, did you kind of feel like like you uh you, you know you needed extra prayer on your you know for yourself yeah i guess so you know i think anytime you go out in the world it's important to have prayer mm -hmm. uh covering and and just you know, Satan, it, I, I believe in spiritual warfare. Sure. <laughs> I believe in that real battle. Yeah. And so I think anytime we're going out as the light, you, you talked earlier about Christians who think you should only be in the Christian film industry or whatever. Right. I, I disagree. We should all be out in the world as a light, as God called us to be in the Bible. But because of spiritual warfare, we do need to be prepared and covered with prayer. So prayer is very important, in yeah. my opinion. Well, by the way, you touched on something there that I, I do think that there's. Uh, there's a calling for all of us to do what it is God wants us to do. For some, of, yeah. for, for some of you, and I'm going to say you because I'm more involved in the faith-based uh, side of uh, filmmaking, but for some of you, you know, it is your calling to be out there in those front lines, if you will, and be out there with, with those folks that, uh, that are creating, that, you know, in the secular field. And then there's those of us who maybe just, you know, God has called us to um, encourage the already saved, for instance. Does that make sense? So I always yeah. say, you know oh, what? I agree. Yeah, whatever it is God called you to do, actually that mm -hmm. is a Christian film, is to do the film that God told you to do, whether it be a film for the Christians or the film for the non-Christians, because they are completely different kinds of films. Uh, yeah. But they're both very necessary. And uh, 
I know there, there are some that feel that if you're a Christian, you got to strictly do, you know, Christian movies. Or also, if you're doing a Christian movie, you have to have nothing but Christian actors. And I'm actually doing a panel at a film festival I'm going to uh, where that's the subject is should you only hire Christian, uh, you know, Christian actors and a Christian crew if you're doing a Christian movie. I think that is a big mistake because I think it's an opportunity for you to really be a witness to some of these folks that are not Christian. Um, I'm assuming I agree. you hire non-Christians for your Christian films, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I do think, and, and I disagree with some of the Christian um, filmmakers out there mm -hmm. who put non-Christians in key positions, like That's different. directing directing a, a, a film about Jesus or The Last okay. Supper. Or the, I don't believe a director who's a non-Christian should be doing that. And so there's there are places where I do I will fill the role with a Christian, but in general, always bring yes. on non Christians on set because we can all be a light and maybe change that life, those you know lives. What? We're going to take a quick break again, and I want to come back and talk about that a little bit more because that is something that has been occurring a lot lately, where uh, you know non Christians have been put in the key roles um, mm -hmm. that is just kind of caused for the for the movie to either be weird as a christian movie it's not really a christian movie at this point uh or you you've got them in a in a key starring role and and the guy or the girl is an absolute mess out there and that does affect the bottom line in a christian movie so let's talk about that a little bit more when we come back folks don't go away we'll be right back sunflowers to pollinate and reproduce, they turn and face the sun. Nature's way of reminding us that for ultimate growth, we must seek the light. Parables, the leader in empowering entertainment. Parables, be empowered. Start your free trial today. I wonder if penguins have knees. I wonder how many colors we can't see. I wonder why there's so many stars in the universe. I wonder if we ever looked like apes. You want to find out? I wonder if puppies have belly buttons. Hello and welcome back to Faith on Film. Man, we've been having a great conversation with Michael. Michael, so okay, we, we got into this whole thing of Christians on on you know on uh, non-Christian sets. Then we got into non-Christians on Christian sets. Um, I think we need to delve into that just another minute or so because you you said something very important. That was that bringing non-Christians into a key role is really not a good idea. And I agree with you, by the way. Yeah, and I even think it also works in, in the key role like a producer. I've I've heard, mm -hmm. my, I haven't been on set when it happened, but I've, I'm, I'm aim well connected in the Christian 
industry. And I've heard from people on set that a producer, I'm going to hear dogs in the background yapping, <laughs> but the, uh, the produce, a producer who is not a nice person representing the production company is not nice to the people on set. Yeah. That's also a key position when you have someone in power, you need to make sure they're a quality person. They don't have to be a Christian, but at least a person who sure. understands how to deal with people, make them feel good about themselves, not someone who's going to be on an ego trip on a Christian film set as a producer. Don't hire that person. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I remember, and I'll go ahead and say it, the movie Noah that came out a few years ago, uh, where a not only a non-Christian, but actually an atheist was brought in to direct the movie. And I, I tell you, I saw the movie, and I saw how he totally turned it into just a big old secular story from, mm -hmm. you know, one of the greatest Christian characters. So that, to me, that was a mistake. Yeah, it's crazy. You know? he, how would he understand how to present that movie? Exactly. There, there was no way, and that's why that's why he didn't. Now, you of course have been uh, also, you know, our, our producer of Christian movies. I know I've got some of your short films on our platform, uh, but you're working on something that's very close to my heart because it has to do um, with uh, with PTSD, right? And veterans, yeah, the mm -hmm. 22 plus per day suicide rate. Yeah, and unfortunately, right now, what's happening is they're just usually getting a 10 minute interview with a psychiatrist and walk out with drugs. And then there's side effects and they're given more drugs. And before you know it, it snowball, snowballs. And I've talked to guys who are on 40 plus, 50 plus pills a day, multiple prescriptions, and th the drugs are killing them. And they're saying there's a direct correlation between the amount of drugs being prescribed and the escalation of suicides among our veterans. Mm -hmm. And so our documentary is basically to show all the many successful treatments out there that are available to help with post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are alternative treatments without needing the drugs. They actually solved the problem. All the veterans we've interviewed all over the country said the drugs were just a Band-Aid. But we've been all over interviewing experts, congressmen, veterans, uh, military brass, generals, um, just amazing people. We're done, for the most part, filming. We're in the edit now. We'll release okay. it hopefully this November for Veterans Day. Okay. Oh. And uh, you can get information about it at WoundedHeroesDocumentary.com. Okay. There's a promo video. And it's such an – I feel like this movie is going to save lives. It's a full-length feature documentary. Sure. It's going to save lives as veterans see there is hope other than drugs. It's off, uh, uh, alternative treatments that will actually give them their lives back. And it's so exciting – I cannot wait to get it released. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. So they can go to the website. Now, are you needing, I know this is kind of a weird question, are you needing for people to help a little bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're producing this through a nonprofit. Silver right. Duff Films okay. is a nonprofit. And so, yeah, of course, we do. We are raising the money with donations, and we have not raised the money for the budget. Okay. And to be quite honest, we're borrowing the money for the budget because I believe it's important to produce this thing. So we're hoping to be reimbursed. But we have sweepstakes on the website. Nice. Uh, like Jay Leno's garage uh, he's doing a sweepstakes. We're going to fly somebody out wow. and they get to go visit Jay Leno's garage and look at all of his 286 vehicles. Kevin Sorbo, an actor we all know and love, mm -hmm. has offered to play a round of golf as a sweepstakes prize, which were very, was very generous of him. And we have a number of other prizes um, on the website. It's, again, it's Wounded Heroes documentary, okay. sweepstakes, and uh, we have other prizes coming. We have Christian bands. Meet them, see their concert, meet them backstage, get pictures. We have a lot of great things to help raise money for the film that's going to benefit veterans. Nice. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a price where people can come and hang out with me for, you know, a couple of days. Oh, don't tell me. I'd pay for that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I normally don't. I, well, at least I've never had people... Uh, you know, brought up the, the money thing in, in the program here, but I just felt this was very important. Um, and probably is because, as I mentioned, this is very close to my heart, because my son actually was also in the army, and he did six years mm -hmm. in the army, uh, did, I believe, two tours of Iraq and four of Afghanistan. So, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, attached to the whole concept of, uh, of you know, uh, being there for our servicemen. So thank you for doing that documentary, and I do definitely believe lives will be saved. Uh, listen, time time just went by, so I, I really <laughs> thank you again for taking the time, especially on such such notice, such so short, such short notice. Say that ten times real fast. Um, uh, you know, uh, let us know, uh, you know, how the how the thing is going. Maybe I'll do another program later on in the year, and then see how you're doing with it. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. You bet. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back to wrap this up. I'm 
Jonah, I'm from Fort Worth. I'm Noah Long from Colorado. Hi, I'm Rayma, and I'm from Oklahoma. From TFI, I expected uh, to be in a classroom and to be on set. But what I got was so much more. I expected a lot of uh, classroom situations, but what I got was a lot more hands-on, and it was more tailored to your interest in the filmmaking world. A lot of great teaching and information that I could apply to what I, what I love and what I do. I came to TFI for my mom. She is really passionate about learning film and directing, and so I came as a favor to her, and I'm really glad that I did. You know, we're at TFI. This summer, come to Orlando and bring your family to the Holy Land experience, where the true heroes live. See with your own eyes the stories of the Bible come to life as you have never seen them before. Through breathtaking live stage musical productions, you and your family will encounter the true heroes of our history. Memorable moments this summer at Orlando's premier family vacation destination. The Holy Land Experience, where the true heroes live. Welcome back to Faith on Film. Uh, I want to thank you for, of course, tuning in to our program today. And I want to thank Michael for... Uh, taking the time to, to come with us and, and let us know all about what he's doing, specifically in that uh, documentary that he's doing about uh, the suicide rate with uh, veterans. Um, I want to make sure that you go to that website of his and uh, just let him know, let him know that you're praying for him. And if, uh, if you're able to support him in some way, you know, please, please do so. Uh, and of course, just remember to pray for all our uh, people that are working in the faith-based film industry or those that are Christians that are working in secular uh, films uh, They all need your prayers so uh, tremendously. I mean, it's it we're in the front lines of the battle here uh, and Filmmaking is the best tool that we have to fight the enemy at this point I uh, also want to remind you to, to check out parables TV a place where you can watch a lot of the faith-based and family movies that we talk about here uh, You can just go to parables.tv and uh, look at a lot of great Christian uh, movies, documentaries, reality shows, music shows, comedy shows, all kinds of great content for the family. Uh, and of course, uh, go check out my Facebook page, Faith on Film TV, and follow me on, uh, on Twitter and Instagram, at Faith on Film. So until next week, be blessed. Mm -hmm.